Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, the Croatian League started last Sunday, two days ago. And in round one, my team faced the strongest team in the league. Uh, I played board one uh, and on board one I faced an international master rated over 2300. Uh, on other boards, uh, basically on all boards except on, on, on the last, they were stronger than us uh, on most boards by a few hundred rating points. Okay, so I've been preparing for this game for a week or maybe 10 days even. Uh, we knew which team we were going to be playing in round one uh, and I was pretty confident as to who my opponent was going to be. There were two possibilities, but uh, international master Zelic was the most likely opponent, so I prepared for him. And uh, I decided to play the London system. Against the London, uh, he played several different setups. Uh, sometimes he starts with e6, knight f6, e6, c5. Uh, sometimes he plays the King's Indian setup. He, he plays a lot of things and I've been preparing for all of them. Okay, in this game he played knight f6 and I went bishop to f4. In the event of c5, e3, queen b6, uh, in the event of c5, excuse me, I was going to play something more aggressive than usual, therefore I accepted this. But he played g6 and this is what I was preparing for the most. And now we get a normal London against the King's Indian. The next 10 moves are main line, uh, so e3, bishop g7, knight f3, castles, bishop e2, d6. Whenever they play d6, you go h3 to make sure you don't lose your bishop. Uh, c5, c3, this is all just the main main line. Okay, and we played instantly. Bishop b7, knight bd2, knight bd7. Now you can go a4 or you can go bishop to h2. I prefer bishop h2, it's safer in anticipation of e5. And my opponent played knight to e4. Now, knight to e4 is uh, a less common move. a6 is uh, by far the most popular, uh, where white responds a4. Uh, queen c7 is also very popular, rook c8 is normal. Knight e4 is an okay move, it's just kind of rare. Okay, now you, you do want to exchange this uh, because you want to activate your passive uh, knight on d2 and I'm going to try and explain why. So after you take, bishop takes knight to d2, the bishop drops back. You are now basically preventing e5 because you have knight c4 and this is a pattern I won two games with. If you are unfamiliar with it and you play the King's Indian or the London, this is what you you have to know it and uh, I won two games with black uh, in, in the same position or a tempo down and one game with white so this pattern of preventing e5 by threatening knight to c4 or if you're playing black knight to c5 uh, that puts pressure on d6 uh, is, is the, as I said it won me three games Okay, I played a4 here and this is the best move. This position I still know, I was still in my prep. And e5 here, it's not that it loses the game for black, it's just imprecise. The engine thinks, okay, here's what the engine thinks, queen c7 or a6, just normal moves transposing to the main lines. Uh, but my opponent played pawn to e5. And now there are three options. You can play a5, which is always good, uh, ruining your opponent's pawn structure and then if that's taken knight to c4 uh, you can take on e5 and d5 would be a dreadful mistake uh, because of knight to c4 uh, and now what can what can black do the best option is queen to g5 you simply go bishop to g3 stopping mate uh, something like rook a to d8 runs into h4, the queen draws back to f6 and now queen to d6. This position should be very, very pleasant for white. Uh, yeah, just, just a lot of pressure and space on the queen side. Uh, after knight e5, uh, you can simply go a5 and again, if that's taken, snap the knight off, uh, let's say d5 and now knight to b3. You're gonna get your pawn back with an obvious positional advantage. So. These are the two options I didn't go for. I went for knight c4 straight away. And if this knight moves away, you can simply take on e5. Uh, 
and the position should be slightly better for white. That, as I said, knight c4 simply gives white an advantage. So my opponent played queen to g5, threatening mate. Uh, I played bishop to f3. Obviously, my bishop is worse than his, uh, so a trade I wouldn't mind at all. Uh, d5 loses a pawn. Uh, e5 gives me such a pleasant advantage that this would be overwhelming. This is actually how I uh, got a winning position in one of my games in Sholta. So this basically has to be taken and after queen takes f3 my opponent decided to trade. Now the interesting thing about this position is that the knight is hanging, the queen is misplaced, the d6 pawn is hanging and both centers are about to crumble and one more very important feature is that my queen is attacking the rook on a8. This you have to bear in mind. This is sort of a pleasant surprise in the position. I never had my queen on f3 in these positions while the rook was still on, on a8. That means that in conjunction with the knight uh, coming to d6, there are always threats of knight takes f7. Uh, sometimes with queen to d5 to follow up. Uh, if that's not taken and if it's taken then of course queen takes a8 and sometimes after queen to d5 you could get nice modern mate uh, uh, ideas so my opponent took cd4 ed4 and ed4 now i have a lot of options uh, i can take on d4 uh, i can play knight to d6 or i can play bishop uh, to d6 knight d6 i didn't like because by taking with the bishop I can gain a tempo on the queen with bishop to f4 and then take and then play knight to d6. I don't have to take a pawn with the knight. Okay, so I played bishop takes d6 and at this point uh, I thought I had an extremely pleasant position. Uh, even though I could lose a pawn either on b2 or on c3, my rooks are coming to the center quickly. I'm gaining a couple of tempi. Uh, the f7 pawn is extremely weak after the knight comes to d6 and all of my pieces are more active than blacks. Once again, this knight is loose, that you have to bear in mind. Okay, the rook has to move. He played rook e8, uh, I gained the tempo, the queen went to f6 and now I took on d4. Okay, and I thought, I thought, uh, the pawn cannot be taken. Uh, now, if the pawn isn't taken, I can simply play knight to e5 next and again with my rook coming to e1 for example black does nothing I go knight e5 that's taken I mean this is just a pawn up position so my opponent took and now I got very excited uh, again there are all of those tactical patterns of attacking f7 and uh, attacking the rook on a8 and my rook's coming to d1 and e1 so i played knight to d6 gaining a tempo of the rook the rook went to f8 and i simply played rook a to d1 uh, i thought i was better here i misjudged the position i am better but i thought i was much better this is actually plus 0.5 it's nothing major but my opponent can go wrong uh, badly and he did he actually uh, blundered horribly in this position uh, the the variation I'd expected and that we briefly analyzed after the game was queen takes pawn this is the most obvious line and now I was going to play knight takes f7 after the game he said it doesn't work I don't know uh, the engine says it's equal but okay, let, let's have a look at it. I think I would have played either knight f7 or knight f5. Knight f5 is a simpler move, attacking the knight on d7, attacking the bishop. And if it's taken, then rook d7. If it's not taken, then knight takes bishop. But knight f7 is more interesting. Obviously, rook f7 fails to queen a8. <clears throat> and I'm just winning. So, uh, what, can, what can he do? Uh, there is actually only one move. There is only one move to keep... Uh, black equal. If knight f6, which may seem like a good move, this loses on the spots. And this I saw. Knight h6 check. If bishop h6, then bishop h6. And the position is just collapsing. The engine says plus 7. 
uh, if rook f7, of course, queen a8, and if the rook moves away from the f-file, then you can take the knight. Oh, sorry, you cannot take the knight. Okay. This actually didn't vis visualize correctly. What if... Ah, okay, okay, yeah, sorry. I would have messed up here, maybe. I just thought the rook cannot move, but the queen defends the knight. Okay. But yeah, you can threaten mate and, and the rook on a8. Okay. Uh, rook a to d1, yeah, queen takes b7. The only move to give black equality uh, after knight takes f7 is knight to c5. The idea being, after queen to d5, you can play queen to b3. And this he saw. Uh, he, he showed me this position after the game. I saw it too, but I thought white well, has to be slightly better. After queen to b3, obviously I don't have any smothered mate ideas, but I could go for knight h6. And if king h8, I can just repeat... Uh, Yeah, there, there's nothing better. I mean, it's it's a double check, so... Okay, so that was the only way for for black to stay equal after queen takes uh, b2 and knight takes f and knight takes f7. If queen b2, knight f5, which should be a better move, then gf5 should be best and, and rook takes d7. Again, threatening rook f7. But... My opponent played a move that I saw loses on the spot and I I couldn't believe that he played it. He played knight e5. Now, after knight e5, white just wins. You can pause the video if you want, there are two winning moves. So, his queen is attacked, my queen is attacked. If I take his queen, then I lose, because he takes on f3 first and then wins an exchange. If I take the knight, uh, I should be worse after bishop takes. Uh, wait. Not after bishop takes, after queen takes bishop, excuse me, because then he's still attacking on b2. I didn't even consider this during the game because I saw the winning continuation immediately. Okay, so I played one of the winning moves. When I was analyzing the game, I saw the second idea, which I didn't even consider during the game. And the engine says the move I missed is the, is the best move and the easiest way to win. But seeing that during a game is impossible. This is the cleanest win. Queen to g3. Still attacking black's queen and attacking the knight twice. So the only move, because queen c3 loses the queen, would be to play queen takes b2. And now rook b1 chasing the queen once, queen d4 defending again, rook f to d1, and now queen c5 is the only way to defend the knight. And after queen c5, rook b5, and black resigns because he either loses the knight or the queen. As I said during the game, I didn't see it. Because before playing rook a to d1, I saw that knight e5 was impossible. That was the obvious tempo move which I had to calculate. The winning move I played, which is still winning enough, is queen takes rook. And after queen takes rook, black should resign. Uh, there's absolutely nothing. Uh, if uh, queen takes d1, then queen takes f8 check and I'm rook up. Uh, if, well, there are no other moves. If he moves the queen away, then I save my queen. The only move is to take the bishop. But now, after queen e4, he has to trade queens. And I'm a clean exchange up. Uh, he has nothing for the exchange. So queen e4 should be the best move. But queen f6 is the only serious alternative, uh, defending uh, the knight once more. Uh, and I actually saw this before playing queen a8, before playing rook a to d1, and this now wins even more, because I can play f4. The knight is forced to d7, and now the final winning tactic is knight to e8. Attacking the queen, attacking the bishop, attacking the knight, uh, there are no moves for black. There's absolutely nothing black can do. Uh, queen c6 is impossible because of queen takes queen. Uh, moving the knight is impossible uh, to, to c5 because I take on f6 with check. And then move my queen. Uh, queen e6 is also impossible because of queen e6 takes, takes, takes. And here, again, I'm just a rook up. Uh, 
queen d8 is also impossible because of knight g7, king g7 and queen to d4. If knight of six saving the knight, then I win uh, a rook. Uh, so the only move was rook takes knight, and now queen takes rook check, knight f8, and now the game is over. I mean, we played on for about 20 more moves, I'm going to show you the game, but there's absolutely no salvation for black. I have to be careful, maybe there could be some tricks, but luckily I was. Okay, I played rook d7. This ties the queen down to the, to the defense of f7, so if, for, exa for example, queen takes b2, uh, then I can play queen takes f7. He played h5. Uh, I didn't want to take on a7 because I wanted to get away from the dark squares before I do, so king h1. Uh, basically, from this point, I was trying not to lose instead of trying to win, because if I can trade down the material, uh, I win, because he cannot move anything. a5, uh, rook to b7, now threatening to take on b6, uh, and also threatening queen to e7 in some positions. Uh, prior to that, queen e7 would have lost, because of rook takes d7, would have lost the exchange back. So if queen e7... Rook d7 if queen f6, knight f6, uh, so I would have to take on d7. So rook b7 here, bishop h6, b3. This is a waiting move. I wanted to save my pawn uh, and just see what black does, because again, he cannot move anything. Uh, he played queen f5, uh, I took on b6. He played queen to d3, now that the queen can move... Uh, because f7 is not attacked twice, he attacked my rook. Now here, I didn't really want to play queen uh, rook to f3, because that gives him some chances after queen d1, king h2, and queen to d4, uh, attacking f4 twice. So I played a much safer move, I just played queen to e1. No checks, I didn't want to allow any counterplay, because if there is no counterplay, I cannot lose, there is no way I lose. He played knight d7, rook b5, knight f6, queen to d1, offering a queen trade and trying to infiltrate queen c3 and now i kind of made a mistake i went for the attack because i missed that he has a defense i thought there was no defense so i played rook b8 king h7 and queen to d8 threatening uh queen h8 checkmate but he has bishop g7 this i just missed so i went back <laughs> i mean i'm not in a hurry uh, the only thing i have to do is play rook b5 queen e1 Queen takes a5, queen to b5 or anywhere, and then a5, a6, a7, queen, uh, and that's it. Knight e4, uh, threatening knight to g3, so rook f3. Queen c5, threatening knight to f2, winning the exchange, so queen to e1, attacking the knight, and saving, uh, defending f2. f5, king to h2, I just wanted to get away from the checks to make sure knight g3 is not checked to make sure knight f2 is not check. Again, I'm just trying to play it safe. Queen d5, rook b5, queen d6, finally queen a5. Now, if he doesn't do anything, uh, let's say he plays, I don't know, I'll just give him a stupid move, bishop to h8, uh, then I'm threatening to take, 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 and then take the knight, and without the knight on the board, there is no counterplay. So he played knight d2, uh, rook f2, attacks the knight, knight e4, and now it's Vishenzug, uh, rook to d5, queen e7, and rook back to f3. And yeah, now there is no more counterplay. I need one more move to set up. Uh, I need to play queen b5, and then my pawn is rolling, and there is no stopping me from queening. Uh, queen e6, again defending this rook f5 threat, uh, queen to b5. Uh, giving up the exchange, sort of. It doesn't work, he didn't play it. If he plays knight c3, I just take it. And after bishop takes, I can trade queens. And obviously, I'm, I'm just going to queen. So after queen b5, he played knight to f6. Uh, I played rook d1. Again, the safest move possible. I don't want any infiltration into my position at all. Uh, he played h4, but this doesn't work. He would have to get in knight h5, knight g3. Uh, he would, well, assuming that I don't sacrifice the exchange back, I would have to move my rook away from the first rank, and then he would have to play queen e1, queen h1, checkmate. That's too slow. So I just played a5, queening, and he resigned. Uh, <clears throat> 
Uh, I cannot explain how how happy I was after the game. I mean, this is the first round of the league. I'm majorly underrated to be playing board one. Uh, and I defeated an international master for the second time in my life. So my team lost, unfortunately. We lost 4-2. to two, But we were, as I said, uh, a few hundred rating points lower rated on, on, on almost every board. So that's no surprise. We had two draws uh, and one win out of six games. Yeah, this was round one. Next Sunday we are playing round two. Uh, and yeah, I'm off to prepare some more. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, I'm incredibly happy to have started the league so well. Uh, see you soon with the next game. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.